Welcome back. All right, so uh, two games tonight in the NHL. Well, today in the NHL, and they're done. So hockey tonight? Nope. Uh, so of course there's some some football game going on. I don't know. It's a it's a rock concert too, I guess. I, I don't I don't know. I guess there's a football game today. You guys can let me know your thoughts. But anyways, um, I'm worried about the hockey. So we'll start off looking at St. Louis and Montreal, and I have a theory about something that happened late in the game. So, uh, Bennington versus Allen, 25 seconds in. Yep, Torovchenko goes beast mode. He was going to have a good game today. Uh, he goes beast mode, goes around Struble, and then around Allen. So, rookie defenseman, it happens. You learn the lesson. Uh, Torovchenko from Sundquist and Krug again, 25 seconds in. And Krug had himself some points today, uh, which is good, because Krug had a rough start to the season. Uh, the Habs look to respond. Armia at a new hook, near miss. Kapanen has a rush chance that saved. Evans is denied and close. Struble has a shot that deflects out. Shots are actually four to two for Montreal, four minutes in. But at 5:05 on their third shot, uh, Shen ends up tipping one in. Although it looked like it was Pareko's goal and went straight in. They're still crediting Shen. Last I saw, Pareko and Kapanen with the assists. It's blasted past a partial screen, which included Shen. So maybe it tips in off of him. But that was only the third shot, and that was the second goal for St. Louis. Uh, Harris gets shaken up. He took a cut on the chin. He was hit by Blay. Now, what's interesting is I wanted to see how they'd call this, because Harris was already on his way down when Blay hits him. Uh, did Blay have have the time to change his trajectory and not make the hit? That's where the debate's going to come in, and then we'll see if the Department of Player Safety has anything to say about it. Uh, Blay ends up getting the full five minutes. They gave him five minutes for boarding, and he was out of the game. Uh, Harris looked pretty woozy as he left the ice. I hope Jordan Harris is all right. Uh, it feels like he got injured not too long ago, that he returned not too long ago. So anyways, um, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. But that's a five-minute power play for Montreal. Uh, new hooks denied. The Blues clear. They clear it again. Caulfield has a net feed that's blocked. It's cleared out. The Habs cycle late. And technically, that five-minute major is killed. Uh, five seconds after it ends... Uh, Suzuki scores from Slavkovsky and Matheson at 10:23. So they don't technically score on the major, but they do score right after it finishes. Uh, Kapanen has a rush chance that saved. Uh, Torovchenko's denied. The Blues end up drawing a power play. So like I said, Torovchenko having a good game. And seven seconds into the power play, Cairo scores to make it three to one. Uh, Thomas and Krug with the assists at 15:20. So that's buried in close. No chance for Allen there. And again, the Blues are off and running. The Blues press with two and a half minutes left. They have some momentum with 147 left. They go to the power play. So that rolls over into the second period where the Habs finish the kill. Then Montreal gets some pressure. In fact, they're leading in shots five to two, three and a half minutes in. Pearson has a net feed that gets picked off. More pressure by Montreal at four and a half minutes. Ulanen's denied. The Blues rush the other way. Uh, we get a power play for Montreal. They cycle. Slavkovsky has a shot deflect wide. That power play is killed off. Uh, Torovchenko's then denied. Allen holds on there. Puck goes the other way. New hook is denied. Armia can't bury the rebound. He had an open net there, too. Just couldn't hit it. Uh, we get a power play for the Blues. Uh, there's an early press. It's cleared out. And a pretty good kill by Montreal. They do kill that one off. Uh, so, again, they're only down by two. They're looking for some kind of break here. Uh, Struble has a shot that's caught and held as Bennington had a good game. Teams exchange rushes. Cairo has a chance that's held. And then, after a turnover in the neutral zone, St. Louis makes Montreal pay. Uh, Nathan Walker scores from Shannon Krug at 17.49. So that's three assists for Krug already. He would end up with four on the day. So again, nice to see Krug getting some points. 32.2 uh, seconds left. The Blues with a power play. Kyra has a shot that's blocked. It's cleared. So the power play rolls over into the third period. And they score on it. It's Thomas from Letty and Neighbors at 31 seconds. So that makes it 5-1. to one. Montreal does answer, though. They had some pressure, and then they'd score. Armia scores from Struble and Savard at 3.05. Uh, so Armia tips that one in. Uh, Blues look to respond. Caulfield's denied on a net drive. The Habs pressed. There was a post for Pearson on a rush. So, again, some opportunities for Montreal today. They just couldn't convert. Uh, we get a penalty shot for Saad. At least it was originally indicated it was going to be a penalty shot. They get together. They discuss. They decide, nope, just a penalty. And the power play, St. Louis scores on it. Neighbors gets the goal from Thomas and Krug at 7:14. It's a bouncing puck that just kind of ends up in the net. Uh, we get a power play for Montreal. That's killed off. And then another weird one. Uh, Cairo. It banks off the boards and goes in. I think this went in off Allen. It's a weird one. Cairo gets the goal. Uh, I believe that's goal number 100 in his career. That's at 15:33, and that makes it 7-2. to two. Uh, This is where they announced Gooley's not coming back, which is not good news. Uh, Caden Gooley got hurt in this game. 
Uh, Montreal's going to miss him for however long he's going to be out. And uh, then Montreal scores as a fight breaks out. So they reviewed to make sure that the fight broke out first. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say what Marty San Luis said, but the second word was clowns. So, um, yeah, he wasn't happy with that one being taken back. My theory is simple. See, it would have been a 7-3 to three goal. There would not be a no mercy magnet on the board. So the way I picture this conversation was, hey, give us that goal so I don't have to deal with that THG guy with the, the no mercy magnet. But... Loses the argument. St. Louis goes to 28-21-2 with the win. Montreal 21-23-8. So now they're going to have to win two in a row to get the record back to 500. Shots on net 15-8. St. Louis in the first 13-10. Montreal in the second 11 apiece in the third. Final shots 36-32 for St. Louis. Power plays the Blues 3 for 5. Montreal 0 for 3. The hits 20-11 for Montreal. Bennington saves 30 out of 32. Allen saved 29 out of 36. Uh, I think we're into a realm here where having a three-goalie rotation is probably hurting at least Allen of the three goalies, uh, which is going to drive down, I would think, his value on the trade market. Because Allen's clearly the one they're going to trade. They're not trading Primo. They're not trading Montembeau. So I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing at this point. But a, a stat line like that might warn off some teams that are looking to fix their goalie problems and might say, you know, Allen may not be the answer. Anyways... The other game played today, the Canucks and the Capitals. Uh, the Caps are playing some good hockey right now, and, and I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, Ovechkin's got it back together. So, yeah, uh, they've they've moved up a little bit in the power rankings from last night, and, yeah, that's despite a loss. So, uh, Demko versus Kemper in this one, early pressed by the Caps, and they scored. Something Vancouver needs to work on is they're allowing early goals in every game on this road trip. Now, the last game on this road trip is on Tuesday in Chicago, Shouldn't be a problem there, but you just never know. So Dowd gets this one. He tips it in. Obey Kubel and Sandine with the assist. That was the second shot on net for Washington. Cavs look to respond. Hoaglander has a sharp angle shot. That save. Dowd fires one wide on a rush. The shot's four minutes in or two to one for Washington. Um, Lindholm fires one for, wide from the slot. The Caps rush the other way. Oh, she's denied as the Caps press. Mantha has a rush chance. That's blocked. Caps press at eight and a half minutes. Uh, the Canucks press. They can't get to the net, though, and then they do. Um, on a breakaway, Garland wires one. Juleson with the assist at 11.09. So Juleson gets the turnover, gets it to Garland, and the best way to get to the net is make sure there's nobody back there. So Garland gets that one to tie it up. Uh, Canucks then press for the lead. Uh, Sandine is denied on a net drive. And then there's an ozone penalty by Oshi. those ones that really make coaches uh, not too happy. Uh, Hronik has a blast that deflects wide. Mikheyev can't bury one. Power play's killed off despite some good chances for Vancouver, but their power play now is officially a concern. Um, fans call one. The referee doesn't. The Caps press with three minutes left. They're kept to the outside. Uh, Miller has a slot shot. That's blocker to side. Canucks press in the final minute with 11 seconds left. The Caps get a power play. So that rolls over into the second period. Uh, there's a shorthanded two-on-one. That's defended. The Canucks do finish the kill. Uh, Joshua has a shot that's blocked. Brief Canucks press follows that. Then they get a more robust pressure uh, at three and a half minutes. Uh, then we get a power play for Vancouver. There's an early clear. Pedersen has a shot that deflects out. Besser has a shot that deflects wide. So the, the power play is killed off. The Caps rush after it's done. Protus has a wraparound that's held. And then Ovechkin, a little bit of a good fortune here, but he puts one in off of a Mon skate. His goal scoring streak is at five. Uh, Ovechkin from Strom and Oshie at 737. So he is 59 goals behind Gretzky now. Starting to sound like he's going to get Gretzky again, doesn't it? Uh, Caps look for another, but at 8.48, uh, Hoaglander uh, roofs one while they're announcing Ovechkin's goal to the scream and throng. Uh, Hoaglander gets this one from Pedersen, and that ties the game at two. It is nice to see Garland and Hoaglander, who've worked so hard this year for Vancouver, being the ones on the score sheet. Uh, Malenstein has a shot that's held as the Caps press to respond. The shots are five apiece with eight and a half minutes left. Protus is denied. The Canucks rush the other way. Uh, Lindholm has a shot that's held. The game was opening up at this point. It didn't feel like a Caps game because Caps games, they, they don't like it when they're wide open like that. Uh, 3.15 left. The Caps get a power play. Patch ready with a near miss. Uh, the Caps uh, cycle. Strom's denied and close. That power play's killed off. Washington presses after it's done. Uh, there's a nice pad save on Jensen. And then the Canucks get a little bit of time in the cap zone. There's a post for Philip Hronick. And the rebound's cleared. So after two periods of play, the score is tied at two. Third period, Protus has a chance to save. The Canucks clear. Hoaglander had a net feed picked off. Garland has a 2-on-1 chance that's kicked aside. The Canucks get some pressure after that. 
McMichael to Protus near miss. McMichael had a really good game. Uh, doesn't get on the score sheet, but he did. He had a really good game. Uh, shots are 4-1 to one for the Capitals at six and a half minutes. There's a near miss for Cole as the Capitals press. The Canucks press, I should say. Uh, fans call one. The referee doesn't, so that's two on the board for that. Uh, Besser to Miller near miss. I did not hear a ref. You suck chant, though. Uh, Ovechkin has a slot shot that saved the Caps press and a really heavy pressure by the Capitals with six and a half minutes left. Demko doing some heroics there. Uh, Cole then has a chance is caught and held with 303 left. Delayed game call against the Capitals. Uh, Canucks cycle. Hughes has a shot that's blocked. It's cleared. Power plays killed off. There's a press by the Canucks to close out the period. Uh, Joshua has a buzzer beater that's held. We're going to overtime. Of course, the Canucks losing their last game in overtime, and so the question becomes, can they get the win here? And here we go. Uh, Canucks control early. Lindholm has a shot that saved. McMichael's denied on a breakaway. So like I said, McMichael had a really good game. Uh, Garland has a rush chance that's defended. The cap set up. Wilson has a net drive that's saved. The Canucks then take the puck. They set up. Uh, Suter has a net drive that's defended. Then the puck's turned over. Uh, Sandine is robbed on a two-on-one. And then on a turnover, Miller gets the puck and just buries it from the slot. So that's at 4.55, just as I was writing shootout on the board. And so, nope, no shootout today. The Canucks win in overtime 3-2. to two. They go to 35-12-6 and six with the win. Uh, with the overtime loss, the Capitals now 23-20-8. They need points. They need wins. But I do think the Capitals are playing better. Shots on that 10-7 Vancouver in the first. 15-9 Washington in the second. 9-8 Vancouver in the third. 4-3 Washington in the overtime. The final shot's 34-31 for the Caps. Power plays, Vancouver 0 for 3, Washington 0 for 2. The hits, 23 to 20 for Vancouver. Demko, 32 saves on 34 shots. Kemper, 28 saves on 31 shots at the other end. Very entertaining game, and uh, some of the hard workers getting the goals today in this one, and uh, kind of fun to see. So let me know your thoughts regarding these two games in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you've forgotten to this point. It's forgiven. Just go ahead and rectify it. Thanks again for all your support. I will talk to you guys again soon.